Hi, welcome to another episode of my yarning down my knitting stash. No, knitting down my uh, acrylic yarn stash uh, video. So um, this is part two. If you missed part one, then please check it out. If you haven't missed it, here it is. Ta-da! This was my uh, finished object for my first stash down video. This will be the next one and I'll show you my yarn. It's right in front of me. I'll show you uh, what yarn I'm going to work on. Um, my plan is to make the festival sweater by Petit Knit and then the children's version. So that's just the regular festival sweater. She also has a baby baby pattern and a my size pattern. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to make the regular one. Uh, I'm going to make the first size. It will be for a little baby girl who is now six months old. So I'm going to make the first size, which is one to two year old. Um, and I, I think it will be just so cute. So I'm going to start working on that. Um, yeah, so I'll show you the yarn right now. It's too full even here. It's too full to actually close, so I'm hoping to make a dent in it now. I'm going to use these two colors for the contrast and then this one for the main. And I've wound up a bunch of cakes of this yarn. So I took apart a bunch of crochet projects that I still had that I was making in this yarn. And I think it's just this beautiful, beautiful light blue. Um, yeah, so I think this is going to be a beautiful festival sweater um, with this and this as the contrast stripes. So let's just get started with this um, cake and then start adding in the colors when I need to. But I hope I won't make a dent in this uh, light blue stash right here. And then hopefully we can get rid of all of this yarn. There's even projects down there still. <laughs> All right, let's get started. I have finished the collar last night and the short rows for the back. So short rows, make sure that the back is higher than the front. And now I'm just gonna have to do some straight knitting. Um, and work until I'm at the first stripe and then decide if I'm going pink or lilac first. So yeah, look how cute it is. It is super, super stretchy. So I think it will fit over the baby's head. Um, I'm knitting the first size of the festival sweater. So this is one to two years. The little girl that I'm making it for was born in December, so she won't fit it yet, but then it will be ready for next winter. And I figure that's nice. And maybe I can roll up the sleeves so it will fit her now too. So yeah, let's continue. Look at this. 
Look how cute it gets when you add in the little stripe. Oh, it's so nice. It's already starting to become like a little, little baby sweater. So in the back it's longer because of the short rows. Front it's shorter. So nice, look at that. The little baby is gonna wear this. Not actually a baby anymore. Is it a toddler after? I don't know. So I'm gonna do another stripe and then let's see. Mm, I think I have to do two more stripes. So I'm gonna do, so this was the lilac. This was, and next stripe will be the pink. So, so cute. Ta da! Look at that. I'm ready to do another stripe of the pink for the body. So it's looking super cute. I'm gonna do one more stripe of the pink and another stripe of the lilac for the body. Then I'm planning on doing one more like two more rounds just in a regular uh, blue and then go into the ribbing for the body. I'm doing it a little less long than the pattern says because I feel like it's pretty long, even for a one-year-old, although I don't know anything about kid sizes. <laughs> uh, and then I'll go on to the sleeves. It's knitting up super quickly, so yeah going well. Hello. 
I thought I would do some chatting about acrylic yarn. Um, do a little knit and chat kind of segment in this video. Because I've been thinking, um, I just released the first part of this video yesterday. And I see a lot of people, so I'm guessing a lot of you guys who are watching this right now, are... Um, like really feel the same way, like, oh yeah, I have a huge acrylic yarn stash and I don't know what to do with it. It's uh, stuff that I bought when I started knitting again, but now I turned into using natural fibers, um, wool, plant fibers, etc. Uh, what to do with it. So I wanted to like talk about what kind of things you can knit with acrylic yarn, just as a little intermezzo i guess in this video so i think uh right now i'm doing a baby knit i think children's knits are really good to use acrylic yarn for uh they can be easily i thought a hair was caught in my knitting they can be easily washed um especially when you're gifting it i think that's a really good idea because then you don't really have to say anything to the parents about how to take care of it. You can just gift it and then not worry about it when it's acrylic yarn. I mean, there's also um, super wash yarns or, uh, yeah, I made sock, like little baby socks before for uh, twins. And those could be washed too, but there's always like little things like don't use any softener or don't put it in the dryer. So I think acrylic yarn is a really good contestant for that. Mm, other things I think that are good, well, I did the Boulevard bag in my first episode or the first part of this series. I think accessories are a really good idea. Um, so bags, uh, like handbags, tote bags, maybe even like something like super fancy looking like the honey clutch of petite knit for example like if you start doing stuff like that it could also i think she has like a honey i looked into it today into petite knits patterns because i don't really know all of her patterns and i was looking at the terrazzo neck which i'll talk about next but uh i saw she has like the honey makeup bag or something and then i was thinking that would be really perfect for acrylic too, because um, you probably get stains in your uh, like your makeup bag, right? And if it's acrylic, you can just put it in the washing machine. So, and I feel like um, if we make really fancy stuff, I mean, like really. Mm, if we use really fancy fibers all the time, it's gonna cost a lot of money. And actually it's kind of nice to be able to make some stuff with acrylic yarn because the only thing that I don't like about acrylic yarn is it being close to my armpit. Um, and kind of the fact that it's plastic. I don't like that either. Yeah. Anyway, so those are good options. So for gift knitting, I think it's also a good idea, but then maybe not garments, maybe more like a hat or like make a muscle borrow hat in, that's one of the hats that I make a lot. Um, like make that in an acrylic yarn and then the person that you gift it to can just put it in a washing machine. That's great. And I was thinking, so I think the third part of this series, big surprise, is going to be the terrazzo neck that I'm going to make for my mother. Um, but more on that later. I'm like really close to starting to cast it on. And I'm also going to include some more in that video. Like, for example, I was thinking stuff like a blanket. That's great in acrylic yarn, I think. Same thing, you can just 
put it in a washing machine. If you have a huge, huge blanket made out of wool, how are you going to wash it? Like, how are you going to dry it? How are you actually going to dry it? Because you need a lot of surface. I'm like looking around my house. I can probably put it somewhere, but it will hang down something. Maybe I can put it on the bed, but then I can't sleep in the bed. So I don't know. Well, that's a little bit of a ramble in the middle. I'm uh, pretty close to starting the last color for the body. And I thought it would be fun to include this. So I'll just keep knitting. I just changed to my three and a half millimeter needles for the ribbing. I'm doing this in four millimeters, by the way. I don't think I shared that. Um, so I did the last round of bubbles for the body. And I'm going to do the ribbing now. But what I like to do, and I thought of sharing this tip, is I always, because when you start ribbing, the first round of, or row of ribbing will always create ribbing in the row before that or the round before that. So what I always like to do is go to a three and a half millimeter needle or like the smaller, the ribbing needle, and then knit a whole round and then go into knit one per one or knit two per two because it actually affects that first round that you would do in knitting just a knit round in the three and a half millimeter needle in my case so that's just like a little tip because i have noticed especially when you have to do uh, decreases too so if you have to do decreases in your uh, final round before ribbing it can help to do that uh, round of knitting and decreasing in your smaller needle because otherwise you can get like kind of holes so it's a little hit a little tip in this video <laughs> i was doing it and then i thought okay i should i should film this so i'll just continue doing that round and then doing the ribbing So about what I was saying before, um, this, so I knit it one round and then I just started the ribbing. So all of that in my ribbing needle. And here you can see this last stitch was a pearl stitch. Oh. And the bump that you have here is the row below the first ribbing row. So this is the stitch that I just knit or purled actually, but it creates the purl bump from the row below. I hope that makes sense. So here you can see as well, this one, the third one is also purl, but it's the row below. So if that like stitch is bigger, then it would get gapier there. So that's why I like to do that. So I hope that helps. A little bit I don't know <laughs> maybe you already knew
I got pretty far. <laughs> got a lot to update on. So last time I talked, I think I was in ribbing of the body. So I did three centimeters, I think, of ribbing instead of the four from the from the pattern. And then I did an Italian bind off. I'm not sure if the pattern says to do that, but I like the way it looks and it's stretchy, so it's nice. Um, yeah, I think it looks good. Then I picked up the stitches for the first sleeve and this went so fast. <laughs> so I think I did film a little bit of making the sleeve, but it went so fast that I didn't even like get a chance to like talk about it for a second. But um, as you can see here, I forgot to do decreases because this pattern says now knit the sleeve for a certain amount of centimeters. And then later it says while also decreasing, which I didn't see. Um, and then I was here and I was thinking, wow, that, that would be a really wide cuff for a baby or a kid's sweater. So yeah, I decreased down to uh, what it needed to be at the cuff in these two sections that I still had left. And it looks a little weird like this, but I think it's fine. I've done this before on sweaters. <laughs> um, yeah, so here's the decreases. You can see them really clearly. I should have done all these decreases that I did here, like all throughout the sleeve, but that's okay. It's nice. It's kind of like balloony a little bit. So now I just started working on the second sleeve and I'm just working the um, the second uh, bobble row. So I did the first pink one and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to make it match this one for the decreases, but <laughs> oopsie. So I think that's all I have to say about it. I felt like I had a lot to update on, but I guess it's a tiny sweater, so that's what you get. But look how cute. Oh, it looks so good. I like kind of feel like it looks a little big, but then I put it on myself and this sleeve literally comes up to my elbow. <laughs> I was almost like, oh, that almost looks like a human, like a human, like an adult size but it, it's not, it's, it's cute and tiny. How nice does that look? Yeah, I'm happy with it. So I'm just gonna keep on knitting on it. Da, 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 da. I just finished the rows that I wanted to do of ribbing for this sleeve. So I did the same thing with the decreases, but it looks a lot neater here. And I think that is, wow, it's blowing out a lot. I think that is because here I started decreasing right after this stripe, but then this bobble kind of like is sticking out. And then for this one, I did one decrease before the stripe. So now it looks a lot more even. So this is the second sleeve and this is the first sleeve. So that's interesting, I think. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna uh, do an Italian bind off for here. So I have my darning needle and after that I will block it and then weave in the ends. So, and why I do that is because when it's blocking, maybe it's different for acrylic. I don't know. But um, when it's blocking, usually the fibers go like more into their place. And then if I uh, weave in the ends afterwards, all the strands have enough space to go to basically. So I'm gonna do that.
da, 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 da. It is finished. It smells nice now because my acrylic yarn stash is kind of like smells a little old or something. But now it smells super good after washing it and blocking it. It looks pretty big, in my opinion. Um, still, but as I said, it only reaches until my elbows. I think it will be fine. I hope so, at least. I hope it's not too big. The kid is like six months, but um, yeah, I was thinking for this winter would be nice. But... Here it is, another finished object on my uh, knitting down my acrylic yarn stash. Um, so I'm super happy with it. I really like the colors all together. Um, yeah, it looks really good, I think. And yeah, I think it's just, it's very, really, very nice. Um, I weighed it to see how much yarn I actually used. And I'm gonna show you one of these balls of yarn. I used uh, th exactly three in weight. So I used uh, 150 grams in total, uh, which would be 450 meters. These acrylic uh, balls are 50 grams are 150 meters. So 150 grams is 450 meters. So I used up almost, I think I had, a little bit more left, but I don't know where that ball is. But I used up a bunch of this blue yarn. This is all I have left. I do have um, one, like a little bit left over. Uh, I think it's in the living room. Um, yeah, so that's good. Made a big dent in that. And that's what I was hoping for. And of the lilac and the pink, I have a lot left over still, but that's okay. It was just a accent color, so. I'm really happy with it. Um, make sure to uh, check out my, or hang around for my third part, um, which I'm gonna start right now. Um, so I hope to see you in that one. And if you have any other ideas, like I shared a few ideas what to do with your acrylic yarn stash, but if you have some other ideas, Please uh, drop them in the description or in the comments uh, down below and then I'll uh, have a look at them and maybe get inspired to do that with my yarn stash. And also feel free to join me in knitting down your acrylic yarn stash. I saw a lot of you were very excited about my first part coming out. So if you're interested in uh, doing it as well, make sure to tag me if you're sharing it on Instagram it would be really fun. And I was even thinking of uh making a little knit along together with someone who messaged me on instagram but that will be coming up soon uh yeah all right i uh, hope to see you in the next part and have a lovely rest of your day bye